What is up everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. My name is Fulpotocha. Today we are reviewing my Mango Nike Vaporfly Next Percents after 100 plus miles. Now I've had like five pairs of these in the past but I've never done an individual review of this shoe at this point in time and for the record's sake of course when I come to comparing the Next Percent 2, I have them somewhere over there, uh, basically I just want to have this video just for transparency just to have that data available and more or less just kind of give you my thoughts at this point in time with this specific build of the shoe this model and yeah we're just going to kind of work from there so make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel you guys know how the rest goes only difference now is at the time of this filming i think i'm 50 subscribers away from hitting the big 1k and for a lot of people that's not a big deal for me that's a huge deal for somebody who's been on youtube for years now and working on various different projects and content this will be the first channel to potentially reach a thousand so that being said if you're a continued subscriber and supporter of the channel thanks so much love you guys very much let's get into it specs somewhere wherever they fit i think they're going to be like right here though so unless you've been sleeping under a rock you'd probably know that this is one of nike's premier racing shoes that is still at the top of the echelon as we still have the alpha fly which has some questionability and some controversy to it, which we can talk about a little bit later. And of course, the Vaporfly 2, which in my opinion still needs a little bit of work before you feel good in it. But if you've owned this shoe for at least the last two or three years that it's been out, you, you probably do feel pretty comfortable in this and in this particular build because the shoe is very all around for what you would like to do in this case. So, obviously, the major deal with the shoe is the carbon plate that is sandwiched between the two Zoom X foams. And now mixing that, and now mixing the carbon plate with this vapor weave material and this hard midfoot lockdown and this good ankle stability design, I would say the shoe overall is just a great racing and trainer as it stands. Now, so here are some of the things that I'm noticing that are a little bit different from previous pairs that I've had with this particular model. So first and foremost, I have always remembered the vapor weave being extremely breathable in the case that if there was any sort of moisture or any sort of rain, the shoe would be able to dry itself off relatively quickly. But in this particular instance, it's kind of strange because I do remember running when it was about 90 degrees outside and just having something that resembled more of a tempo to easy kind of effort. And the, my socks were definitely getting really sweaty and the moisture was obviously running down uh, to the socks and into the shoe region. And the shoe wasn't able to breathe very well in this particular instance. And I don't know if it's a, the type of vapor weave that's available on this shoe or I just am not used to the vapor weave breathability as it compares to something like the Alpha Fly or something like the Tempo Next Percent where it's more of this like fly knit or atom knit respectively type of build which is just way more open breathes a lot better than something like this and the moisture kind of traps itself in the sock but not necessarily in the shoe and it gives you this illusion that the shoe is obviously retaining the moisture when it's really not but in a way it is retaining the moisture from just whatever is going on in your feet that was the first thing i noticed and I don't think it's necessarily a manufacturing error or anything of that sort. It's just I'm used to probably just the higher quality of breathability that's now available in something like the Vaporfly Next Percent 2, the Alpha Fly, etc., etc. Second thing I'm noticing here now, this is the first time I've noticed this in any sort of Vaporfly uh, Next Percent shoe, is that particularly with my left foot, Sometimes when I'm striking, it feels like the midfoot area of my foot gets a little bit sore. And not in a way where it was like sore when I originally broke my foot, but it does just feel like it just cracks like right about this region of my foot whenever I'm striking. And it's not like a painful thing, it's just a, it's a sore feeling. So it's a lot different than if we were to say, if you're experiencing some kind of pain, some kind of sharpness. It just feels like really dull right in this area of the foot. And it could be that this lockdown, as you can see, every time I like take off and put on the shoe, readjusting this particular area of the uh, shoelace grab, I guess you can say, might just be pushing down and just putting a little bit of stress and tension in that area. It's very likely, maybe I do have to open that up and I can fix this issue. Or because maybe I'm putting in a lot more miles than I was putting in in 2020 because obvious reasons and 2019 was like the peak 
mileage year for me. And now that we're getting back into it, the foot and like my body overall needs to readjust and kind of figure itself out once more and start getting the hang of running these longer distances and maybe running in a carbon plate shoe when something like the Tempo Next Percent and the Alpha Fly were available with these Air Zoom Pockets to kind of like eat the initial strike of your run, kind of have a sink and then have that spring decompression. Maybe that was just a luxury that I got really used to and now when you're going strictly with like a Zoom X and a carbon plate, you hit the ground a little bit harder and now, you know, potentially it's just something you got get used to again. That you're just, you lose that luxury of the air zoom pockets is what I'm trying to get at here. So that's the two major things I'm noticing, of course, right now. So the next thing you guys probably want to see, which I probably should have done at the beginning of this video, is kind of show you what the bottoms are looking like and we can analyze that from here. So here we go. This is what the bottom of the shoes look like at approximately 100 miles. And as you can see, there's some particular wear points but of course as we always do in all of these particular videos i like to analyze the right shoe mostly because it's the most interesting of wears all the time so this is the shoe at about 100 plus miles as you can see there's a bit of like rock stabbing in this midfoot area there's a lot of shred kind of going on again in this particular spot within the shoe and of course another interesting portion that is taking a lot of wear and tear is right here kind of in this closer to midfoot heel region and that might be just again from the way my foot lands hits the ground the foot kind of drops and then there's kind of a spring effect that could be what's going on here and that's maybe why this part of the shoe is taking such a wear but it also it could be a potential that there's just zoom x just exposed versus these reinforced rubber plates and that's probably what we're essentially seeing here so again this wear is kind of normal for me at least to see at this point in the shoe's lifespan again in the next 100 miles it's gonna look crazy i'll bring in the other zoom fly next percents that i have i'll bring in the other vapor fly next percents i have you're gonna see quickly that this will just start getting eaten up and after a while we're gonna see the carbon plate that's in the shoe after I shred all this rubber off. Unless my stride has slightly changed and my strike on the ground has also kind of varied, where maybe I just smooth it out and I don't just start eating into this rubber. That'd be really sick because that's progress in my opinion to ultimately extend the, sh the lifespan of the shoe and have something of a stride that's a lot more efficient and less destructive on running shoes overall. So. The next question here you're probably wondering is, hey, Phil, are you ever going to race in this? And guess what? This is about the range where I think in most of my Vaporfly Next Percents, I'm able to start putting it into a race category and start using it. And here's why. It sounds crazy because of how much the shoe is worn out, but here we go. Basically, when the shoe first comes out, in my opinion, there's a lot of wax. There's a lot of oil on the shoe that I think is important to break off in order to not essentially lose what I think is some grip and is some mobility within the shoe. So once it kind of shreds off to a fine point and you have just the rubber exposed kind of like this, maybe not nearly as bad like in this particular area, I guess we can use this shoe as a prime example for the left foot where the wax is kind of off, the oil's kind of off, and you have this just raw rubber exposed for the shoe. This is where, in my opinion, I think the shoe at least for me has shined brightest and I would like to race with at this particular time. So if there is like something like a 5k and I don't have like an alpha fly available to me or anything like that, this would be my second go-to shoe. And that's even before the Vaporfly Next Percent 2, which is not at 100 plus miles yet. Haven't done my full assessment on it, which I will eventually at that point in time. But this would be my next runner up for sure. Pun intended, I guess, sure. So yeah, this is um probably an unpopular take but I do like to start racing in these shoes a hundred to maybe like minimum 50 miles in to training in this shoe so I think that's how I'm gonna leave this vlog off for now or this particular shoe review entry uh, if you have a similar experience with the vapor fly next percent at this point in time with like this foot dullness kind of pain whenever the foot strikes the ground and it's like in this midfoot region where I guess the metatarsal kind of meets the knuckle of your foot i mean give me you know just let me know in the comments below if that's kind of something you're experiencing if you got a pair of uh, mango next percents rate them one out of ten you guys know how this goes 
I think that's, yeah, I, we're, we're going to leave this for now until I can get the Vaporfly Next% 2 to about 100 miles, and then we do a side-by-side -side comparison and eventually a tempo run test in both shoes, respectively. So that's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you guys real soon.